Welcome back! In part 1 of this tutorial we have refactored the code for the player object so that we can separate the player input, so the input from the mouse and keyboard and the agent script that drives the whole setup for our player. This will allow us to create an enemy that will be able to chase the player and attack it when it is close enough or just wait uh, in place when the player is too far away. And that's what we are going to create in this video by creating a custom enemy AI script. So let me select the scripts folder and I will create a new script called enemy AI. But before I can open it up, I need to go back to my player input script that we have created in the previous video. Now here we have created those Unity events that will send the information about the input to our other scripts, especially to the agent script. We need to have the same events in our enemy AI script. So let's copy those and let's go back to Unity. Now let's open the enemy AI script. And now we can delete the update and start methods and we can paste the Unity events. Now I need to right click on this quick action and say using unity engine.events library. Uh, this library will be important and uh, now we can use our unity events in this enemy AI script. Now to create any sort of enemy AI we need to have some parameters that will drive it. So for us it will be a serialized field private transform player which is the reference to our player object. Next. We need to consider what we want to do. I want to chase the player and I want to attack the player. So I will have a serialized field private float chase distance threshold equals 3 and attack distance threshold equals 0.8f. So this is a float value. Now the idea behind this is that we need to kind of make a decision. When should we chase the player? When should we stop and attack the player? And when we should stand idle? So basically this is it. Those are the distance thresholds that we are going to use to make a decision of what our simple AI should do. And this indeed will be a very simple AI. I will have a future video about uh, creating a more complex AI system. For now, all we need to have in addition to that is the attack delay and the past time. So the idea is that if we are close enough to perform an attack, we do not want to keep on spamming attack button. We want to wait a bit so that our enemy can wait. We are going to have those float values and we are going to compare if the pass time is greater or equal to attack delay. We are going to make a, to perform an attack and we are going to reset this pass time to wait another second before we perform another attack and we can tweak it here through this serialized field. Okay. Now again, we are going to use those events to send the information, but now we need to get the information that we want to send. To do this, we are going to create an update method. And in this update, first we are going to check if player is not null. Or rather, we are going to check if it is null, because if the player is null, it is dead, we are going to be able to return not making any additional calculations. If it is not the case, we need to calculate the distance so that we can check our threshold. So float distance equals, and we are going to call vector 2.distance, and we want to take the player, which is a transform, so we can access position, and we are going to have this transform dot position. This way we are going to get the distance between the enemy and the player. Now we are going to have a bit of convoluted logic if and we want to check if uh, distance is less than the chase distance threshold. In this case, we want to start chasing the player. Now, first of all, we want to make our character look at the player. And this is where our on pointer input comes in. Because in my default setup, the character is always looking and pointing the weapon at the pointer of our mouse. In our case, we want to call on pointer input question mark dot invoke and we want to pass the player dot position because that is where we want to point our weapon in this direction our the remaining logic will do the rest for us now next we have this convoluted logic where we need to now decide if we are in close enough to attack or should we start moving towards the player to get in range of the attack so what we want to do is first we need to check if our distance is now less or equal to the attack distance the threshold, in this case we want to stop and we want to perform an attack, else we want to start moving towards the player. 
Now this will be a very simple logic, very basic, but it will work okay for our case. So what we want to do is if we are uh, further from our player, we want to calculate vector 2 direction. And basically we want to move in the direction of our player, which is now the player dot position. So this is the player transform dot position minus transform dot position. And what we want to do is we want to pass it as a normalized value. So we are going to call on movement input our unity event from above. And we want to send to it question mark dot invoke direction. But we want to call on it dot normalized. So we are going to return this vector with the magnitude of one so that we move using this vector rather than a larger vector which would make our movement faster. Okay. So this is the case where we want to chase. So we can add a comment chasing the player. Now, else uh, we are going to uh, have this attack behavior. Okay, so now how we are going to go about this. Basically, what we want to call is on movement. And since we are close enough for the attack, we want to perform uh, on movement input invoke and we want to pass here vector 2.0 so we do not want to move anymore if we are close enough to the player to attack it now if we are we need to check now we have those two float values if the pass time is greater or equal to the delay this means that we can perform the attack but then we are going to reset the time wait a second basically before we attack again so we are going to check if passed time is greater or equal to the delay time uh, attack delay that is why we have set both of those to be one so at the start it will be equal to one so this is equal to the attack delay we are going to call on attack question mark dot invoke and this is the way we are going to perform an attack now since we do not want to continuously attack beforehand we are going to call per uh, pass time equals zero so now we know that we are going to wait at least one second before we can attack again. So our enemy can attack again. Now one problem that we have is that we are never uh, increasing this pass time. So after this if statement, in case we are idle or in case we are inside this if statement, we are still going to exit it at some point. And we still want to charge up the attack. So we are going to check if pass time is less than attack delay. Then we want to add the pass time plus equals time dot delta time. So even if our enemy is standing idly, because basically this is it, this is idle. Uh, when our enemy is idle, we are going to still charge our attack. If we have performed the attack, we are going to exit this if else statement and we are going to again charge up the attack. So it should work for every case in our AI. So let's save this script and I think we are done here. Let's go back to Unity. Great. In the previous video, we have already prepared our enemy uh, object, our variant of the player. So all we need to do is drag on it the enemy AI and we need to assign the same events to our agent script that we had in our player. We have used the player input. Now we are going to use this enemy AI script and we need to assign the player. So let's first assign the player and next let's add plus uh, using this plus icon callbacks to each of those events let's drag the agent of the enemy and let's select our agent for the movement we want to set the movement property for the pointer input we want to set the uh, agent pointer input and for the on attack we want to set the agent perform attack now our agent should start attacking our player uh, or chasing our player if it is within the range of three spaces and it should attack when it is in range of 0.8. So let's press play and let's see how it works. Okay, now let me get closer to my enemy. And as you can see, it is performing the attack. Now one issue in my setup is that my player is on the layer player. My enemy needs to be on a different layer to actually be able to hurt my player. So I'll select my layers, add layer and I'll add an enemy. So now the enemy, if it is on the enemy layer, it will not hurt any other enemies but only the player if it hits multiple colliders now i'm going to change the layer only for this object i can delete those squares and now let me press play again great now let me get closer to the player 
uh, to the enemy and now we can see that our enemy has killed the player and now it is not moving because the, uh, the player transform reference is null. So let me press play again and let me try attacking back and let's see if it works. Okay, let me hit the enemy and I have killed the enemy because basically I'm attacking much faster. If you are interested in creating different enemy types, you can check out my Make It 2D platformer where we are going to create different enemies including a boss enemy. So the link will, to this course will be in the description. In the future videos I will show you how to create an enemy that can actually avoid obstacles when following the player and I will show you how to create this knockback effect and add it to the, to the game. Okay, see you in the future tutorials.